Autumn, what a fantastic time of year it is for both colour and lighting. And I thought I'd show you a technique that I like to use that enhances the colours, the tones, the lighting in the picture and even adds a glow. Right, we're going to come over to the Layers panel. We're going to duplicate the background layer. I'm going to use Command J or Control J. That's Command J, Control J. And we've duplicated our background layer. Next, we're going to come up to Filter. We're going to go down to Blur. We're going to come across to Gaussian Blur. And we're going to blur it, uh, not by that amount. I'm going to drop it down into this sort of area here. That's getting better. There, 45 pixels. It's that sort of look. If you really sort of squint your eyes up, yeah, that's the type of look we're after. 45 pixel radius. We're going to click OK to that. Next stage, we're going to come up to the blend modes. We're going to change the blend mode from normal. We're going to go down to soft lights. And look at the difference this has made to the image. We've gone from this to this. Now looking around the picture, Looks pretty good, love the colours, love the tones, the lighting that we've now enhanced with this image. However, there's some parts of the picture here, for example, got a couple of apples as well, which are looking just a little bit too bright. This area of the image as well, that's, uh, yeah, that really does, after you've gone around here, it's just a bit too bright because your eye then comes up and it tends to wander out of the image. So for the next stage, we're going to be using dodge and burn. And I want to show you the technique that I like to use we're going to start off by coming over to the layers panel. We're going to put in a new empty layer. In it goes, layer two. Let's come up to edit. We're going to go down to fill layer and we're going to fill the layer content using from the drop down menu here. Select 50% gray. We're going to click on OK. Once again, coming to the blend modes, we're going to change the blend mode to soft lights. We can now see through that 50% gray layer. Coming over to the toolbox, we're going to pick up the dodge and the burn tool. And if we come down to tool options, the dodge and the burn tool is in with the sponge tool. There's the dodge tool. We're going to start off using the burn tool. The range I'm going to be using is set to midtones. The brush I'm going to be using is a 300 pixel. There it is there, soft edge brush. So, sorry about that. It's just off the recording area, but it's a 300 pixel soft edge brush. The exposure by default is set to 50%, but I prefer to drop this down to 20%. It just gives you a little bit more control. Right, let's fold that down out of the way. Going to bring the dodge tool up to this area here. Sorry burn tool up to this area here, get it right. Using the right hand square bracket, talking about get it right, right hand square bracket, making the brush bigger, see what I did there? Right, moving it over that area once, coming over it again like this, we're just starting to darken that down nicely. Now the reason I like using this method, rather than using the dodge and burn tool on an image itself, now it's got a couple of advantages. First of all, if you try using the dodge tool directly onto the image itself, what you'll find happening is where you've got darker areas for this one, for example, you've got lights and you've got darks, particularly around this area here, we've got dark, this area being light. Using the burn tool, the darker areas will really get dark. They will start to burn out. Right, if I press O, that's going to take me back to the burn tool. Let's come over to this one here and you can go over that, just darkening that down a little bit. Going over this one as well, that 20% just gives us a little bit more control. Brush now a bit big, so I'm going to use the left hand square bracket just to drop the size of the brush down. Going over that so like this, let's just make that a little bit darker. This one a little bit darker here. And we can just come over them if I switch this on and off. And there it is, you can see the difference starting to make to the picture. Now it's also got another advantage. If I go over this, I'm going to go deliberately go over this a number of times like this. I'm really going to darken this down. And you're thinking to yourself right now, I've made that apple too dark or that part of the picture too dark. Let me show you another advantage of using this method. If we change the blend mode back to normal, you'll now see that black spot. That's where we were working. This is the one we've made extremely dark. If I pick up the brush tool, and if I bring the brush tool out, just keep an eye over here. We've got black as the foreground color. If I bring the brush tool over to this area, if I press and hold down Alt or Option, notice the way the brush tool changes to a target tool. I can now click down. We've now set gray, 50% gray, to the foreground color. I can come over that. I can remove that one spot like this. We can now change the player mode 
back to soft lights, I can press O on the keyboard. O on the keyboard is shortcut for the burn tool. I can now come back to it. I can just burn it down a little bit. So you've got complete control. If you look at it and you think, no, I've made it a little bit too dark, made it a little bit too bright, you can come in and you can change it. Talking about Brighton, let's come down to the tool options. I'm going to pick up the Dodge tool. This is where we're now going to start lightening parts of the picture. Once again, mid-tone set for the range. Soft edge brush, exposure 20%. There's the size of the brush. And if I just come into the image, I'm just going to brighten these up a little bit. Let's just brighten that up and there as well. A little bit of brightness in these apples these here in the background would do nicely and so uh, yeah just make those a little bit brighter and a little bit brighter here again and you'll notice these little white spots that's where we're working exactly the same if you think i've made it too bright you can just go into it you can just change the color to the 50% uh, gray paint it out with a brush and you can start again right let's just brighten up that area like that that looks better switching it on and off and you can see the difference we're starting to make to the picture. Right, one thing I'd like to do with this, and uh, yes, you know me, I like to add vignettes to the picture. We're going to use the elliptical marquee tool. So in with the tool options, there it is, the elliptical marquee tool, it's, which is in with the rectangular marquee tool. I've got the new selection, feather is set to zero. Right, if you come down, I'm going to click, I'm going to drag it out over the image like this. Now with the new selection, Bring in the cursor to the inside to get that little rectangle with a flag, which means we can move it around. But don't worry, we can also move it around in the next stage. The next stage being an adjustment layer. We're going to be using hue saturation. Now with this, if we come down to the lightness slider, I'm going to move this across. You'll notice the center of the image darkening down. Now with this, if we take a look at the mask here, white, this is the area we're working on. Black is the area which is protected, and we need to invert this. There's a very simple shortcut. That shortcut is Command I or Control I. That's Command I, Control I. There it is, we've now inverted it. The black area, this is the area which we can now see through. The white, this is the area we're now working on. If I bring that right the way down, you can make it completely black. Bring it up the other way, and you've got a light area. I'm just gonna drop it back into Tell you what, let's take it down into this so we can see exactly what's going to happen. You'll notice we've got a very hard edge there. Remember when we went to the tool options, feather was set to zero because after all, how much are you going to feather it by? Well, a great way of seeing this is if we come up to filter, we're going to come back to blur. We're going to come back to Gaussian blur. Now when Gaussian blur opens, if I just drop this down to 0.1 got a hard edge if I click on it you can see there's a very hard edge as we start to bring this up you'll notice the way that starts to softens off we are now feathering that hard edge I'm going to take it up into this sort of area here let's just go a little bit further if I just click down there's the before and the after I'm going to click OK to that we're going to drop this down into the realms of sensibility perhaps something in that area and if I just switch this on and off, you can see exactly how that's working with the image. Right, let's pick up the move tool. We can even move this around. There it is. It looks like we've now got a torch working in darkness. So you can reposition it into that area there or just put it back into the center, whatever you want to do with it. There is our finished image. I'm going to bring my cursor onto the workspace. I'm going to right click. We're going to change the background color to black because after all, with colors and tones, we can really see how they're going to look against the black background. Let's come down to the background layer. I'm going to press Alt or Option. I'm going to click on the little eye icon. That's what we started off with. That's what we finished up with. Looking pretty good like that. There is our blur layer. In fact, coming to layer one, we're going to call this blur color, pressing enter or return. Let's come up to this one. If I switch that on and off, there's our dodge and burn. Now these are all completely adjustable. Put this aside. I'm just going to double click. We're going to call this D and B. Put it aside, then look at it a couple of days later with fresh eyes. We can make any adjustments to this. This is all completely adjustable. You can even come to the, uh, there it is, the vignette layer. 
you might want to drop the opacity down or leave it where it is or take it up higher by coming to it and adjusting the sliders. Everything is completely adjustable. You might even like to try experimenting with blend modes, perhaps overlay, seeing how that works with your picture. Don't forget as well, you can use the opacity slider just to drop it down. So just have a look, see what works for your images. Hard lights is another one you might like to try, but I'm gonna go back to soft lights. I'm gonna press shift on the keyboard. Shift on the keyboard is going to remove the panels. There is our finished image. Go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, but until the next time it is, happy imaging and take care.